Hey guys, welcome to another episode of A Little Bit of Everything with Erin. Uh, today we will be doing petri dishes with epoxy resin. And to make the petri dishes actually look like petri dishes, you're going to need white alcohol ink. It's what makes the magic happen. Um, mine is Pinata brand. It's a good brand. I like to use this one. I'm also going to be using other alcohol inks. You can get any brand. Pinata is a lot that I have, and Jim Holtz, which you can find at like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. The Pinata I buy on Amazon. I'll link that down below. I'm also going to be using my round mold that I use for coasters. Now, in my last video where I had to wear my respirator, because if you're working with epoxy, please respirator and glove. This is very, very important. I see too many videos with epoxy where people aren't even wearing gloves and they're touching it. That's, that's a no-no. So anyway, last video where I wore one, it was a little difficult to hear me. So I'm just going to go through it and then I'll do a voiceover on this. So let's get started. Okay, so you're going to want to start with epoxy and you're going to have two bottles, A and B. Now I'm going to start pouring in part A of my epoxy. I'm using a kitchen measure and a red solo cup. I zeroed out the cup and then poured in my part A. Next you'll be using part B and my resin is a one to one ratio so I need the exact same amount of part B that I used for part A. Now I'm actually pouring it right into the cup. Some people use two separate cups, whatever works for you. Now that I have equal parts, it's time to stir. You wanna stir this for approximately three full minutes. You wanna stir slowly in one direction and make sure that you're getting it fully consistent, scraping the sides of the cup, getting it all incorporated. Just a reminder, this is sped up. Don't stare this fast. Once you've been staring for three minutes, I like to take a second cup and pour it all into that cup just to make sure I got everything stirred correctly and parts A and B are mixed well. And make sure you scrape the cup and get every last bit of epoxy out of there because this stuff is expensive and there's no, no wanting to waste any of that. Okay, time to get the mold set. I got it on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Now you just pour in your epoxy. And what I do is I do a thin layer at first. And then I hit it with my heat gun to get any air bubbles out. Some people use blow torches. I just happen to have a heat gun and that's what works for me. So right here I'm just getting all the air bubbles out. I see a little one right down there at the bottom that I'm going to try to hit. You don't want to heat it too much because it can harden the epoxy quickly and then it's just ruined. So now I'm slowly adding in a little more. And I'm going to start my second one. And I'm going to go back and hit those air bubbles again. And just that second layer just getting the last bit of epoxy out and like I said earlier it's expensive so I'm going to scrape the cup to make sure I get every last bit of it out that I can and then just get those last few air bubbles out with the heat gun All good. Now it's time to pick what color inks I want to use. I think this is the most difficult part because every color is pretty and you just want to throw them all in there. But this time I'm going to start with the black by Pinata. And there's no rhyme or reason to this madness. Just drop the ink where you feel like dropping the ink. The Pinata white 
is what makes the magic happen. I should have I should have shook that right there and I forgot. So you add the white and the white actually pushes the other ink colors down and you can kind of see it doing its magic there. Now I'm going to be taking the magenta pink and I'm going to fill in the clear spots. And I'll just add a little more and you can always add it on top of the white also. And anytime you add color, you want to go back with the white. This is what's going to make the blooming happen. I don't know why it does it, but the white is the only one that pushes those other colors down. I don't know if it's just heavier because of how they have to make it or what. But that's it. Now to do my second one, I want to have some clear spots in this one. So I'm going to be taking the pink again and adding a few drops of that up top. And this ink is just going to move. You don't really have a lot of control over it. Now I'm going to take some purple and go right next to the pink. And I think this one was called Mermaid. It's really pretty, like a turquoisey color. And then I'm going to take Pinata White and just go over all of that to get the blooms. I decided to add a little of this metallic gold just to see what, what it would do, if anything. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see how the colors are just mixing together in the epoxy. Now we let them sit. Do not touch them. Okay, we've let them rest all night. Let's pop these bad boys open. So if you want to see, sometimes the bats are just as pretty. So this one we use black ink, pink ink, then the white to make the tea tree dish look. And we did a little bit of the metallic gold on the back just to finish it. You can see it a little bit in the clear spot. This one we did the pink, the purple, and the mermaid blue, and then the white to get the petri dish effect. I really, really like this guy. It's so pretty. I don't know how well you can see the side. I like the side images of the petri dishes just because of how the ink looks as it flows through. The resin. Now you can see the tops of mine are shiny. And in my other video, I told you if you haven't watched this before that it's shiny because the inside of my mold is shiny. If this was matted like the back side, my tops would come out matted as well. And to fix that, you would either put a thin layer of epoxy resin on top of the top here, or you could use high grit sandpaper and sand it and wet sand it to shine it up. So that's how you do the Petri molds.
They're super fun and make really cute coasters. I'll try to take some images so you can get a better view of the sides and everything. But I love how they turned out. If you have any questions, you can leave a question down below. If you have ideas of other videos I should do, you can leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, happy crafting!